afternoon, good evening, whatever time you find yourself watching this video. I pray that you have had a blessed day. Welcome back to Jesus in the Center. My name is Ebony, and today we are going to be reading day 72 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. We are going to cover 1 Samuel chapters 20 through 24, so let's dig into the Word of God. David now fled from Naoth and Ramah and found Jonathan. What have I done? He exclaimed. What is my crime? How have I offended your father that he is so determined to kill me? That's not true, Jonathan protested. You're not going to die. He always tells me everything he's going to do, even the little things. I know my father wouldn't hide something like this from me. It just isn't so. Then David took an oath before Jonathan and said, Your father knows perfectly well about our friendship. So he has said to himself, I won't tell Jonathan. Why should I hurt him? But I swear to you that I am only a step away from death. I swear it by the Lord and by your own soul. Tell me what I can do to help you, Jonathan exclaimed. David replied, tomorrow we celebrate the new moon festival. I've always eaten with the king on this occasion, but tomorrow I'll hide in the field and stay there until the evening of the third day. If your father asks where I am, tell him I ask permission to go home to Bethlehem for an annual family sacrifice. If he says, fine, you will know all is well. But if he is angry and loses his temper, you will know he is determined to kill me. Show me this loyalty as my sworn friend, for we made a solemn pact before the Lord. Or kill me yourself if I have sinned against your father, but please don't betray me to him. Never, Jonathan exclaimed. You know that if I had the slightest notion my father was planning to kill you, I would tell you at once. Then David asked, how will I know whether or not your father is angry? Come out to the field with me, Jonathan replied, and they went out there together. Then Jonathan told David, I promise by the Lord, the God of Israel, that by this time tomorrow or the next day at the latest, I will talk to my father and let you know at once how he feels about you. If he speaks favorably about you, I will let you know. But if he is angry and wants you killed, may the Lord strike me and even kill me if I don't warn you so you can escape and live. May the Lord be with you as he used to be with my father. And may you treat me with the faithful love of the Lord as long as I live. But if I die, treat my family with this faithful love, even when the Lord destroys all your enemies from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a solemn pact with David, saying, May the Lord destroy all your enemies. And Jonathan made David reaffirm his vow of friendship again, for Jonathan loved David as he loved himself. Then Jonathan said, Tomorrow we celebrate the new moon festival. You will be missed when, when your place at the table is empty. The day after tomorrow, toward evening, go to the place where you hid before and wait there by the stone pile. I will come out and shoot three arrows to the side of the stone pile as though I were shooting at a target. Then I will send a boy to bring the arrows back. If you hear me tell him they're on this side, then you will know as surely as the Lord lives that all is well and there is no trouble. But if I tell him, go farther, the arrows are still ahead of you, then it will mean that you must leave immediately for the Lord is sending you away. And may the Lord make us keep our promises to each other for he has witnessed them. So David hid himself in the field, and when the new moon festival began, the king sat down to eat. He sat at his usual place against the wall, with Jonathan sitting opposite him and Abner beside him, but David's place was empty. Saul didn't say anything about it that day, for he said to himself, something must have made David ceremonially unclean. But when David's place was empty again the next day, Saul asked Jonathan, why hasn't the son of Jesse been here for the meal either yesterday or today? Jonathan replied, David earnestly asked me if he could go to Bethlehem. He said, please let me go for we are having a family sacrifice. My brother demanded that I be there. So please let me get away to see my brothers. That's why he isn't here at the king's table. Saul boiled with rage at Jonathan. You stupid son of a whore, he swore at him. Do you think I don't know that you want him to be king in your place, shaming yourself and your mother? As long as that son of Jesse is alive, you'll never be king. Now go and get him so I can kill him. But why should he be put to death? Jonathan asked his father. What has he done? Then Saul hurled his spear at Jonathan, intending to kill him. So at last, Jonathan realized that his father was really determined to kill David. 
And Jonathan left the table in fierce anger and refused to eat on that second day of the festival, for he was crushed by his father's shameful behavior toward David. The next morning, as agreed, Jonathan went out into the field and took a young boy with him to gather his arrows. Start running, he told the boy, so you can find the arrows as I shoot them. So the boy ran, and Jonathan shot an arrow beyond him. When the boy had almost reached the arrow, Jonathan shouted, The arrow is still ahead of you. Hurry, hurry, don't wait. So the boy quickly gathered up the arrows and ran back to his master. He, of course, suspected nothing. Only Jonathan and David understood the signal. Then Jonathan gave his bows and arrows to the boy and told him to take them back to town. As soon as the boy was gone, David came out from where he had been hiding near the stone pile. Then David bowed three times to Jonathan with his face to the ground. Both of them were in tears as they embraced each other and said goodbye, especially David. At last, Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for we have sworn loyalty to each other in the Lord's name. The Lord is the witness of a bond between us and our children forever. Then David left and Jonathan returned to the town. Amen. At the end of chapter 20, we see Saul reveal his true colors to his son, Jonathan, about his intent for David and what he wanted to do to David. So now Jonathan is sending David on his way so that his father doesn't kill him. So let's find out what happens in chapter 21. David went to the town of Nob to see Amalek, the priest. Amalek trembled when he saw him. Why are you alone? He asked. Why is no one with you? The king has sent me on a private matter, David said. He told me not to tell anyone why I am here. I have told my men where to meet me later. Now, what is there to eat? Give me five loaves of bread or anything else you have. We don't have any regular bread, the priest replied, but there is the holy bread, which you can have if your young men have not slept with any woman recently. Don't worry, David replied. I never allow my men to be with women when we are on a campaign, and since they stay clean even on ordinary trips, how much more on this one? Since there was no other food available, the priest gave him the holy bread, the bread of the presence that was placed before the Lord in the tabernacle. It had just been replaced that day with fresh bread. Now Doeg the Edomite, Saul's chief herdsman, was there that day, having been detained before the Lord. David asked Amalek, do you have a spear or sword? The king's business was so urgent that I didn't even have time to grab a weapon. I only have the sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah, the priest replied. It is wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. Take that if you want it, for there is nothing else here. There is nothing like it, David replied. Give it to me. So David escaped from Saul and went to King Achish of Gath. But the officers of Achish were unhappy about his being there. Isn't this David, the king of the land, they asked? Isn't he the one the people honor with dances, singing, Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousands? David heard these comments and was very afraid of what King Achish of Gath might do to him. So he pretended to be insane, scratching on doors and drooling down his beard. Finally, King Achish said to his men, Must you bring me a madman? We already have enough of them around here. Why should I let someone like this be my guest? All right, so that is the end of chapter 21. We see David going to another town where there is a, a priest and he asked the priest for food and he asked the priest for a sword. Um, but there was also one of Saul's herdsmen there. So I'm assuming that this herdsman may have seen David while he was trying to escape. But let's find out what happens in chapter 22. So David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. Soon his brothers and all his other relatives joined him there. Then others began coming, men who were in trouble or in debt or who were just discontented until David was the captain of about 400 men. Later, David went to Mizpah in Moab, where he asked the king, please allow my father and mother to live here with you until I know what God is going to do for me. So David's parents stayed in Moab with the king during the entire time David was living in his stronghold. One day, the prophet Gad told David, leave the stronghold and return to the land of Judah. So David went to the forest of Hereth. The news of his arrival in Judah soon reached Saul. At the time, the king was sitting beneath the tamarisk tree on the hill at Gibeah, holding his spear and surrounded by his officers. Listen here, you men of Benjamin, Saul shouted to his officers when he heard the news. 
Has that son of Jesse promised every one of you fields and vineyards? Has he promised to make you all generals and captains in his army? Is that why you have conspired against me? For not one of you told me when my son made a solemn pact with the son of Jesse. You're not even sorry for me. Think of it, my own son encouraging him to kill me as he is trying to do this very day. Then Doeg the Edomite, who was standing there with Saul's men, spoke up. When I was at Nob, he said, I saw the son of Jesse talking to the priest Amalek, son of Ahitub. Amalek consulted the Lord for him. Then he gave him food and the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. King Saul immediately sent for Amalek and all his family who served as priests at Nob. When they arrived, Saul shouted at him, Listen to me, you son of Ahitub. What is it, my king? Amalek asked. Why have you and the son of Jesse conspired against me? Saul demanded. Why did you give him food and a sword? Why have you consulted God for him? Why have you encouraged him to kill me as he is trying to do this very day? But sir, Amalek replied, is anyone among all your servants as faithful as David, your son-in-law? Why, he is the captain of your bodyguard and a highly honored member of your household. This was certainly not the first time I had consulted God for him. May the king not accuse me and my family in this matter, for I knew nothing at all of any plot against you. You will surely die, Amalek, along with your entire family, the king shouted, and he ordered his bodyguards. Kill these priests of the Lord, for they are allies and conspirators with David. They knew he was running away from me, but they didn't tell me. But Saul's men refused to kill the Lord's priests. Then the king said to Doeg, you do it. So Doeg the Edomite turned on them and killed them that day, 85 priests in all, still wearing their priestly garments. Then he went to Nob, the town of the priests, and killed the priests' families, men and women, children and babies, and all the cattle, donkeys, sheep, and goats. Only Abithar, one of the sons of Amalek, escaped and fled to David. When he told David that Saul had killed the priests of the Lord, David exclaimed, I knew it when I saw Doeg the Edomite there that day. I knew he was sure to tell Saul. Now I have caused the death of all of your father's family. Stay here with me and don't be afraid. I will protect you with my own life for the same person wants to kill us both. Amen. So that is the end of chapter 22. Um, this chapter got crazy real quick. We see the Edomite telling Saul that he has seen David um, with the priest Amalek. And so Saul calls Amalek, accuses him of conspiring with David and has the whole town of Levites wiped out, which is crazy that he was willing to kill the priests of the Lord because he thought that they were conspiring against him. And so let's go on to chapter 23. One day, news came to David that the Philistines were at Kilia, stealing grain from the threshing floors. David asked the Lord, should I go and attack them? Yes, go and save Kilia, the Lord told him. But David's men said, we're afraid even here in Judah, we certainly don't want to go to Kilia to fight the whole Philistine army. So David asked the Lord again, and again the Lord replied, go down to Kilia, for I will help you conquer the Philistines. So David and his men went to Kilia. They slaughtered the Philistines and took all their livestock and rescued the people of Kilia. Now when Abithar, son of Amalek, fled to David at Kilia, he brought the ephod with him. Saul soon learned that David was at Kilia. Good, he exclaimed. We've got him now. God has handed him over to me, for he has trapped himself in a walled town. So Saul mobilized his entire army to march to Kilia and besiege David and his men. But David learned of Saul's plan and told Abithar the priest to bring the ephod and ask the Lord what he should do. Then David prayed, O Lord, God of Israel, I have heard that Saul is planning to come and destroy Kilia because I am here. Will the leaders of Kilia betray me to him? And will Saul actually come as I have heard? O Lord, God of Israel, please tell me. And the Lord said, He will come. Again David asked, Will the leaders of Kilia betray me and my men to Saul? And the Lord replied, yes, they will betray you. So David and his men, about 600 of them now, left Kilia and began roaming the countryside. Word soon reached Saul that David had escaped, so he didn't go to Kilia after all. David now stayed in the strongholds of the wilderness and in the hill country of Ziph. Saul hunted him day after day, but God didn't let Saul find him. 
One day near Horesh, David received the news that Saul was on the way to Ziph to search for him and kill him. Jonathan went to find David and encouraged him to stay strong in his faith in God. Don't be afraid, Jonathan reassured him. My father will never find you. You are going to be the king of Israel and I will be next to you as my father, Saul, is well aware. So the two of them renewed their solemn pact before the Lord. Then Jonathan returned home while David stayed at Horesh. But now the men of Ziph went to Saul and Gibeah and betrayed David to him. We know where David is hiding, they said. He is in the strongholds of Horesh on the hill of Hakilia, which is in the southern part of Jeshimon. Come down whenever you're ready, O king, and we will catch him and hand him over to you. The Lord bless you, Saul said. At last, someone is concerned about me. Go and check again to be sure of where he is staying and who has seen him there, for I know that he is very crafty. Discover his hiding places and come back when you are sure. Then I'll go with you. And if he is in the area at all, I'll track him down, even if I have to search every hiding place in Judah. So the men of Ziph returned home ahead of Saul. Meanwhile, David and his men had moved into the wilderness of Moan in the Arabah Valley, south of Jeshimon. When David heard that Saul and his men were searching for him, he went even farther into the wilderness to the great rock, and he remained there in the wilderness of Moan. But Saul kept after him in the wilderness. Saul and David were now on opposite sides of a mountain. Just as Saul and his men began to close in on David and his men, an urgent message reached Saul that the Philistines were raiding Israel again. So Saul quit chasing David and returned to fight the Philistines. Ever since that time, the place where David was camped has been called the Rock of Escape. David then went to live in the strongholds of En Gedi. Amen. So that is the end of chapter 23. Um, we see once again Saul chasing David, but David is spared because the Philistines began to attack Israel again. So Saul has to take the army and go and defend the country. All right, let's see what happens in chapter 24. After Saul returned from fighting the Philistines, he was told that David had gone into the wilderness of En Gedi. So Saul chose 3,000 elite troops from all Israel and went to search for David and his men near the rocks of the wild goats. At the place where the road passes some sheepfolds, Saul went into a cave to relieve himself. But as it happened, David and his men were hiding farther back in that very cave. Now's your opportunity, David's men whispered to him. Today the Lord is telling you, I will certainly put your enemy into your power to do with as you wish. So David crept forward and cut off a piece of the hem of Saul's robe. But then David's conscience began bothering him because he had cut Saul's robe. He said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do this to my Lord, the king. I shouldn't attack the Lord's anointed one for the Lord himself has chosen him. So David restrained his men and did not let them kill Saul. After Saul had left the cave and gone his way, David came out and shouted after him, my Lord, the king. And when Saul looked around, David bowed low before him. Then he shouted to Saul, why do you listen to the people who say I am trying to harm you? This very day you can see with your own eyes it isn't true. For the Lord placed you at my mercy back there in the cave. Some of my men told me to kill you, but I spared you. For I said, I will never harm the king. He is the Lord's anointed one. Look, my father, at what I have in my hand. It is a piece of the hem of your robe. I cut it off, but I didn't kill you. This proves that I am not trying to harm you and that I have not sinned against you, even though you have been hunting for me to kill me. May the Lord judge between us. Perhaps the Lord will punish you for what you are trying to do to me, but I will never harm you. As that old proverb says, from evil people come evil deeds, so you can be sure I will never harm you. Who is the king of Israel trying to catch anyway? Should he spend his time chasing one who is as worthless as a dead dog or a single flea? May the Lord therefore judge which of us is right and punish the guilty one. He is my advocate and he will rescue me from your power. When David has finished speaking, Saul called back, Is that really you, my son David? Then he began to cry and he said to David, You are a better man than I am, for you have repaid me good for evil. Yes, you have been amazingly kind to me today. For when the Lord put me in a place where you could have killed me, you didn't do it. Who else would let his enemy get away when he had him in his power? May the Lord reward you well for your kindness you have shown me today. 
And now I realize that you are surely going to be king and that the kingdom of Israel will flourish under your rule. Now swear to me by the Lord that when this happens, you will not kill my family and destroy my line of descendants. So David promised this to Saul with an oath. Then Saul went home, but David and his men went back to their stronghold. Amen. So that is the end of chapter 24. As you can see, the Lord has delivered King Saul into David's hand. David could have killed him, but instead he does not. And then he comes out to Saul and he says, look, I could have killed you, but I didn't. And I'm innocent of all these things that you are accusing me of. And Saul finally confesses and says, yes, David, you're right. You know, you are a good man. You've been faithful. And so they make this pact that when David becomes king, that he won't kill any of Saul's um, descendants. But all right, that's it. That's the end of day 72 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. I pray that you are blessed by this reading. Um, don't forget to download the, re the reflection questions that can be found in the discussion section of the videos. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so that you can get the notification for day 73 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. All right, guys, have a blessed day. Bye.